Well, thank you very much. And um, thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak here to the organizers. And I'm going to tell you about, am I echoing or it's just? No, it's good. OK, I feel I'm echoing to myself. <laughs> OK, so uh, I'm going to talk about um, an invariant that's been around for a couple of years now called uh, the positive semi-definite rank of a non-negative matrix. And this is joint work with several people. Um, so it's a, it's a union of several papers. But at the, uh, in the spring this year, we wrote a survey, which you can find on the archive. And my talk today is going to be based on the outline of this survey. So. So let's hope for the best. Um, OK, so let me start by right away defining what the notion is. And um, we'll see lots of different mathematical aspects of this, this rank. Um, so the definition is as follows. We start with some non-negative matrix M. Let's assume it's P by Q. And throughout the talk, I will assume there is a matrix M of size P by Q with non-negative entries. So plus includes the. Uh, include zero, so these are really non-negative entries. And then the definition of PSD rank is the following. So it's the minimum integer k, positive integer k, such that I can find matrices A1 through AP that I can put on the rows of my matrix M. They have to be PSD, so this is my notation for k by k PSD matrices. And I should also be able to find another set of PSD matrices B1 through BQ that I can put on the columns of my matrix M, such that when I take the inner product of AI and BJ, I recover the IJ entry of the matrix M. Okay? So the inner products that these AIs and BJs make should be exactly the entries of M. So the minimum K for which such matrices exist um, and the matrices are K by K PSD is exactly defined to be the PSD rank of a non-negative matrix. Okay, so let's see a simple example. So let's look at this matrix M, which is the derangement matrix of size three by three. Okay, and uh, this matrix has rank three. The usual rank is three, but it has PSD rank two. Okay, so that means I can put two by two PSD matrices on the rows and columns of this matrix M such that the inner products will line up to be these entries that you see here. So here is, for instance, a factorization through the 2 by 2 PSD cone. So A1, A2, A3, I would put on the rows. B1, B2, B3, I would put on the columns. And then you have to check that the inner products line up. So just a quick check. For instance, if I want to check that the 3, 1 entry is 1, I want to make sure that A3, uh, in a, a, the dot product of A3 and B1 is exactly one, and that's true because of this one and this one, and everything else is zero. Okay, so this is this is the uh, an example of a PSD factorization of size two for this three by three matrix. So this example is in interesting because right away you see that rank can sometimes be bigger than PSD rank. Okay, so this is now on the other hand, if you look at all three by three, can I, can I uh, just ask, what, what's, why should we think that there's an immediate connection between? The, the or any any relationship between the rank and the PSD. I'll come to it. Just okay. So one thing is easy, right? If you didn't have the PSD constraints, then there's a quadratic. You could think of just the matrices as being <coughs> as vectors. Right. And then hmm? There's a quadratic relation. Yeah, but that, but the PSD cone has dimension three. 
Yeah, we'll get there. So anyways, okay. 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 All right. So if you have, um, uh, if you take another set of another three by three matrix, like the identity, for instance, then the PSD rank is actually three. And we'll see just very shortly that there is a certain range that the PSD rank could have been if, um, sorry, if the rank is three, then these are the only two possibilities. Uh, sorry, no, okay. said that wrong. If you have a three by three matrix, then the only two possibilities for PSD rank are two and three, and hopefully you will start seeing why all of this is true as I go on. Okay, so this is just a simple example and the basic definition. You mean, you mean for a rank three, three by three? Matrix. No, I don't mean that. I, have, I mean, yeah, exactly, for a rank three, three by three matrix. Okay. Right. Okay, so since, since this whole definition of PSD <coughs> factorization or PSD rank and so on is a factorization result, let's just kind of compare it up front to what we think of rank, uh, how we think of rank as a factorization. So remember that when we calculate the usual rank of a matrix, what we're calculating is the minimum k such that I can write m as a times b, no restriction on what's inside a and b, such that a is a p by k matrix and b is a k by q matrix. So I want to factorize my m as a and b where I want to minimize the intermediate dimension, which is k, and that's exactly what we call rank. And if we reformulate this slightly, then what we are saying is I can think of the rows of this matrix A as vectors A1 through AP that live in RK. And I can think of the columns of the matrix B as vectors B1 through BQ that live in the orthogonal, in, in the dual space, RK star. And what I'm asking for is MIJ is equal to AIBJ, right? So this is exactly what rank is. And this is basically where we are asking for the factorization of a matrix through subspaces. Right? So we are given the set of Euclidean subspaces, and we are asking for the smallest subspace in this family through which I can factorize my matrix. And similarly, PSD rank you should think of as factorizations through cones as opposed through subspaces. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that might help actually. Okay, so, so here's a, a general definition of what we call the cone rank of a matrix. And this was introduced in a paper by Joao, Pablo, and myself in uh, some years ago, appeared last year. And here what we do is we take a family of cones. They have to be closed in the sense that if you look at a face of the family, it again has to be in the family. That's important. So for instance, non-negative orthons have this property. Every face of a non-negative orthon is a smaller non-negative orthon. The PSD cone has this property. Every face is another PSD cone of smaller size. So if you take such a family of closed convex cones, then we can define in general the cone rank of a matrix. And that's just the minimum k through which I can factorize my matrix, meaning I can find elements a1 through ap in the cone indexed by k, and elements b1 through bq in the cone index in the dual cone uh, CK star, such that when I look at MIJ, this is exactly the inner product of A and BJ. Okay, so these are cone factorizations. And on Monday, we saw in Sanjeev Arora's talk, the example where this family is the positive orthons. If you take the set of all positive orthons, then this rank is what's usually called the non-negative rank. And we write this, I'm going to write this in my talk with a plus at the bottom. Okay, so this is the non-negative rank of a matrix. And here now we are looking at the family of PSD cones, and I have analogously this PSD rank. And you see immediately that the non-negative rank is always going to be bigger than the PSD rank, bigger or equal to the PSD rank, right? So why is that? Because if I have a PSD factorization, uh, sorry, if I have a non-negative factorization, I can think of every vector that I got as a diagonal matrix which will now be a PSD matrix, and therefore the size of my PSD factorization can only be smaller than the size of the non-negative factorization. Okay, so Ben, hopefully this answers something. Okay, so, um, so here is the general relationship between all of these three ranks that I talked about. So non-negative rank we know cannot exceed the dimensions of the matrix, right? Because any matrix I can write as M times the identity or identity times M. So I definitely don't need more than the minimum of P or Q. And as I just explained, if you have a non-negative factorization, you can convert it to a PSD factorization. So clearly PSD rank is less or equal to non-negative rank. So this chain of inequalities is pretty straightforward. And then this, is, this looks complicated, but this is also straightforward. What it's saying is that if I have a PSD factorization, 
then just you know string the L, the rows of the matrix along as a long vector, and I will get a rank factorization of uh, not a rank factor like a a rank type factorization uh, of size equal to PSD rank plus one choose two. Right. So if my PSD factorization had size k, then I would get a k plus one choose two dimensional factorization of my matrix uh, with just uh, vectors um, of that size. So if you, you know, rewrite that whole uh, inequality, then you get something like this. It says that roughly the square root of rank is a lower bound on PSD rank. Okay. So as we saw in the very beginning, rank can be bigger. But the square root of rank is definitely a lower bound on PSD rank. OK, so small cases are very easy to, to determine. So if the rank of your matrix is 1, then PSD rank is 1, and vice versa. OK, there's nothing to think about. If the PSD rank is 2, uh, sorry, if the rank is 2, then again, we, we have the situation that PSD rank is exactly 2. And this takes maybe a little bit of thought, but not so difficult to see. So rank and PSD rank definitely agree when for the values 1 and 2. So the first place where we're going to see a difference is in rank 3, like we saw on the first slide. And let me do another example where you see what happens to PSD rank for rank 3 matrices. Okay, So this is, again, a class of a family of 3 by 3 matrices. These are circulant matrices, so I'm putting parameters A, B, C. Uh, as a circulant into this 3 by 3 matrix. They are non-negative values, A, B, C. And in this picture, what I'm trying to draw here is how the set of A, comma B, comma C uh, partitions according to different PSD rank. Okay, So for instance, uh, when A equals B equals C, that's the only situation when rank is 1. And in that case, PSD rank is 1 by this, uh, uh, this fact that I had up here. And that's so, so there's a line coming out of the origin exactly going up like that, where rank and PSD rank are both 1. Okay, So I didn't write that. Everywhere else, when you don't have A equals B equals C, the usual rank is 3. So if the usual rank is 3, PSD rank can be 2 or 3. If you look at this inequality, you will see why that's the case. So there are only two possibilities. So the PSD rank can be 2 or 3. And PSD rank is going to be 2 if and only if you lie inside this parabolic region, inside this quadratic region. Okay? So there is this quadratic inequality that you can write down in A, B, and C. And then inside this, this uh, quadratic convex quadratic region, you will get PSD rank equal to 2. And of course, there's that line. just that's, that's, So you have to remove that. But everywhere else, you will get PSD rank equal to 2. Okay. So this picture is a bit misleading because it might make you think that there is some nice region in which the PSD rank is 2 and then 1 and then 3 and so on. But the picture is actually very, very complicated if you try to do this for in, if, in the space of matrices in general. So in general, we can study this kind of question. right? We can look at all matrices of size p by q of rank 3. And then sitting inside it, there will be matrices of size p by q of PSD rank 2. And this is going to be some complicated semi-algebraic set in general with lots of components and so on. So this particular case of 2 and 3 has, is being investigated by Kaya Kubias and Elena Robiva and Richard Robinson. And they have some very nice results. Like they can tell you what the topological boundary of the semi-algebraic region is, what the algebraic boundary is, how many components it has, and so on. And it's pretty crazy. It, it gets really complicated and out of control. But this example is nice because it'll show up again in a more complicated way um, and maybe simple enough to see what's happening. OK, so that's sort of the basic relationship between rank, PSD rank, and non-negative rank. So now let me introduce one more rank, which may not be very familiar. And this rank actually plays a very crucial role in this whole theory. And this is what we call the square root rank of a matrix. Okay, So this is the definition. So I still have my matrix M, which is non-negative. Now let's look at all possible Hadamard square roots of this matrix. So that means go to every entry in the matrix, and you're allowed to replace that entry with plus the square root or minus the square root. Okay? So there are two to the p times q choices. So there are two to the p to pq Hadamard square roots for a given matrix. So I'm taking entry-wise square roots of my matrix M. So there are tons of them. Sorry? So there's no demand for symmetricity. 
Did no, no, no. My matrix M to begin with is not symmetric. Even, it wasn't even square. Yeah, it's just an arbitrary non-negative matrix. Okay, so we we look at all possible signings of the square root. But That's but what we're doing. Interesting or, uh, to restrict yourself for our to symmetric uh, matrices and have AI equals BI and in the Adamar have like sym symmetric things or is it like uh, no? Uh, well, so if you do that kind of stuff, all sorts of complications come it up. Simplify your life; it makes them complicated. It makes it much harder. If you require the AIs and BIs to be the same, yes. then we don't even know whether there's a finite K whether there is a, a PSD cone of finite uh, sized matrices where you can find such a fact. It gets really complicated. And this, this has lots of applications. So we're doing sort of general non-negative matrices of size uh, P by Q. OK, so what's this square root? So we look at all possible Hadamard square roots, and then look at the usual rank of each Hadamard square root, usual rank, and then take the minimum one. Okay. So that value is what we call the square root rank. And it looks a bit artificial, but you'll see immediately in, by the end of the slide why this plays a role in the study of PSD rank. Okay? So this is what we're saying. So for all the people who love to minimize rank, it would be really nice to understand how small this can get and so on. So you're looking at you know, a whole cube worth of square roots, and we would like to minimize rank, how small can this get? The smallest value that the rank can take is what we're calling the square root rank. OK, so circle and matrix again, same example as before. So as we saw before, we know exactly where PSD rank is 1, 2, and 3. So inside the parabola, it's, three, it's 2, and on the line, it's 1, and outside the parabola, it's 3. That's what we had before. But now let's see what happens to square root rank. So square root rank is the minimum of the ranks of these Hadamard square roots. And now what happens is you get an additional surface that grows out of the parabola. It's like a flower. It's like one of these foliums. It's very beautiful if you rotate this in Mathematica and look at it. And then the, the result is that the square root rank is going to be less or equal to if and only if your ABC lie on either the parabola, the quadratic surface or on this degree 6 surface. This is a degree 6 surface that shows up. And if, if you're exactly on that surface, then the square root rank is less equal to 2. And here's the line right in the center where all the ranks are 1. Okay? And everywhere else, it's 2. But if you're like in the, in the open region here, inside the quadratic um, uh, region, but outside the flower, then P, uh, square root rank is 3, PSD rank is 2. So it is not exactly the same. So it's like a square root version of the determinant. Yeah, that's right. OK, so this is what happens to this picture. So this maybe also already gives you some idea that these ranks have complicated regions in which they stay constant. OK, so why is the square root rank playing a role in, in, in the notion of PSD factorization? And it's exactly because of this fact. OK, so the square root <coughs> rank of m is the minimum k such that I can find a PSD factorization of size k of my matrix with all factors having rank 1. Okay, So the AIs and BJs that we put on the rows and columns, I didn't have any restriction on their rank when I put them up there. They just have to be in the PSD cone of size k. But now if you impose the additional restriction that all my factors have to have rank 1, Rank, they are rank 1 matrices, then immediately you will get this invariant called the square root rank. And it takes a little bit of, it, it's not so hard to prove that this is the case. Okay, so this is one definition, and then this is exactly why this plays a role. So we immediately see that square root rank is bigger than PSD rank because I'm imposing additional restrictions on the factors. I'm requiring them to be rank 1. So it's an upper bound. In some cases, it's a really good upper bound, and in many cases, it's a really bad upper bound. <laughs> Okay, so we'll see examples of different kinds. But one fact that comes out immediately, which is a little useful, is this fact. So if you take your M to be a 0, 1 matrix, okay, then let's see what happens. So if you take it to be a 0, 1 matrix, then one of its um, Hadamard square roots is itself. Right? I could replace all zeros and ones with just zeros and the same thing. One of its Hadamard square roots is itself. So the rank of this matrix, which equals the rank of this positive Hadamard square root, will be smaller than the square root rank, which is the smallest I could get by changing signs. Therefore, I will get that the rank of the matrix 
is big O equal to square root rank, and square root rank was an upper bound on this, so I will get that PSD rank is bounded about by rank. So this is the one very special case where rank actually jumps in front of PSD rank. Usually rank can be either above or below, but bounded below by square root of rank. But in this case, you have this upper bound by rank. Very, very tiny, right? No, it can't. You'll see it's control, right? Because of, um, oh yeah, it could be, sorry. Yeah, it could be very, very tiny. So for example, for rank three matrices, the PSD rank can be arbitrarily high. And we will see. What in this equivalence allows you, I mean, I'm not sure I see a proof, but what in this equivalence allows you to pick signs as to whichever way you want? Okay, so here's the proof. Um, so what happens is, so let me do it with, um, so we're trying to put a bound on the PSD rank of M, right? So let's look at the square, at one of the square roots, any square root, okay? So now take a rank factorization of this. So this has some rank. So let's say the rank of this one is R. So I'm going to, so this is some P by R matrix. This is an R by Q matrix. No restriction on the entries of A and B, okay? Now from every row of this A, construct this um, rank one matrix. And from every column of this B, construct this rank one matrix, right? So now when I take the inner product of these two rank one matrices, I will get exactly the inner product of AI and BJ square, okay? And this is exactly MIJ, okay? So from a rank factorization of any Hadamard square root, you're actually producing a factorization of my original matrix with rank one factors. That's true. <coughs> so it's, uh, it plays an important role, this uh, square root rank. Okay, so I've introduced all the ranks I want to introduce now. So let me just put up a table that just compares all of them. Okay, so there's rank, non-negative rank, PSD rank, and square root rank. And since in this talk we're only interested in PSD rank, let me only focus on this column, okay? So this double, double less than means that the difference can be arbitrarily smaller or bigger, okay? And if you have a single um, inequality, uh, and if there's only a single inequality that shows up, that means that there is a gap, but the gap is controlled. It cannot grow arbitrarily big, okay? So for example, um, rank can be arbitrarily smaller than PSD rank. We will see such examples soon. There are rank three matrices that have growing PSD rank, growing to infinity. Uh, on the other hand, rank cannot be much bigger than PSD rank because of this in the, one of the, the first inequalities that I showed in the chain. Non-negative rank can be arbitrarily bigger than PSD rank, not just exponentially, arbitrarily, okay? And the reason, a very nice example is the Euclidean distance matrices. So here we take Mij to be I minus J square. That's, it's a N by N matrix, where the entries, entry Ij is filled with I minus J square. This has rank three that you can check. It has PSD rank two because it's an entry Y square. Right? So since it's a, it's a Hadamard square of the matrix with entry I minus J, its PSD rank is bounded above by the rank of its square root, which is the matrix with entry I minus J that has rank two. So PSD rank is two. And then there is this nice result that says that the PSD, the non-negative rank is log N, roughly. It's easy to see it's at least log N and then it was a, a, a result of Pavel Rubish that it is exactly log N, it's theta log N. Okay, so this um, non-negative rank grows to infinity, but PSD rank remains constant at two, no matter what size of this matrix has. So, it, and the size of the matrix can, can grow arbitrarily. So if I, if I just uh, consider uncontrolled things, then basically the ordering is rank is the smallest, then PSD rank, and then the square root rank and rank and non-negative are incomparable? Yeah, so that's true. Uh, rank can be bigger, but not no, but so like much. Uncontrolled yeah, like exactly, so. exactly. Yeah. So this example kind of shows you that in general, you cannot assume that all the factors have rank one if you want to study PSD rank. If you put a, a bound, a lower bound on square root rank, it may sometimes have no connection to uh, the PSD rank, like this example. But in on all the cases we actually care about later with polytopes and so on, we don't have such an example where the square root rank and the PSD rank are arbitrarily far apart. 
But for arbitrary matrices, the entire table can be filled, and we have examples of all possible scenarios in the survey if you want to, uh, if you're interested. Okay, so this is what happens to all of these ranks. So now let me come to kind of the motivation for why we introduced this rank and wanted to study this. So it's a geometric interpretation, and it's related to these extended formulations and lifts and so on that you may have seen already. But let me say everything from the beginning. So, what, so let's start with a, a convex set that I'm going to call P. It lives in Rn. So we say that it has a PSD lift of size k. If I can write P as the projection, so pi stands for projection, of the intersection of the PSD cone of size k with an affine space. Okay, so this SK plus intersect L is the spectrohedron that we saw in band stock. It's a slice of the PSD cone. So I'm saying that P has a PSD lift of size k if there is a projection of that slice that exactly matches P. Okay, so pi is a linear map and L is an affine space. So here's a picture. This is the elliptope, the whatever, the, the samosa, the elliptope from the morning. It projects down to a square. So this is a PSD lift of the square of size 3. This is a slice of the 3, uh, three by 3 PSD cone. Okay, so that's the definition of a PSD lift. Now, how can we sort of relate this to PSD rank? So for that, we need to introduce the notion of a slack matrix. So here's a general definition. So if I have a polytope P sitting inside a polyhedron Q, then let's assume that we are given a P by its vertex description. So P is the convex hull of P1 through PV, and Q is given by its inequality description. So it's AJ transpose X less equal to BJ. Okay, so let's assume there are V vertices in P and F facets in Q. You can assume everything is a facet. Then the slack matrix of this pair PQ is a V by F matrix. So it has vertices indexing the rows, facets indexing the columns, such that if you look at the IJ entry, then you're just exactly recording the slack of the ith vertex in the jth facet. So that means you're plugging in the ith vertex PI into this position here and calculating how far is beta j from this value. So it's beta j minus aj transpose pi. Okay? So this is the slack matrix of a pair of polyhedra. One is a polytope, the other one is a, a, a polyhedron, and I get this v by f matrix. Okay? Now this may look very specialized, but every non-negative matrix is the slack matrix of a p sitting inside a q. Okay? So this is not a special construction. So any time you give me a slack mat a, a non-negative matrix, I can write it as uh, I can rank factorize it. So I can write this as A times B, where again there is no uh, restriction on what's inside A and B. And from this A, I will get a P, and from this B, I will get a Q, such that when you look at the slack matrix of the pair, this is exactly the original matrix M. Okay, so this is not a special construction in that sense. So every non-negative matrix is a slack matrix uh, of this type. Okay, so then, we ha then there is this theorem that relates PSD rank to uh, PSD lifts. Okay, so let me give you the theorem uh, in two parts. So the first part is a little bit is is the general version. So it says that the PSD rank of the slack matrix coming from P and Q is exactly the minimum k such that I can put a projected spectrohedron between P and Q. Okay, So a projected spectrohedron coming from the k by k PSD cone in the middle of P and Q. So I, I should be able to nest it. Okay, So that's what it is. So if I have any matrix, so remember this can be any non-negative matrix, I can construct from it this P and Q. Its PSD rank is exactly the, this, the size of the k such that there is a projected spectrohedron nested between the p and the q. Okay? Now, the, the case that's been studied a lot is this case where p and q are the same. So you're taking the vertex description of p and the facet description of the same p. Okay? They're the same. Then the slack matrix is what's usually called the slack matrix of a polytope. And in that case, the PSD rank is the minimum k such that p has a PSD lift of size k. Okay? So this is a theorem. And remember, this is for any convex set. This is not, um, this is not uh, special. And the history of this theorem is like this. So the second statement 
where p equals q. It's not a priori been clear that this is well defined, right? Because you actually these lengths are defined from matrices. Yeah. The matrix doesn't uniquely define p and q. It, so in, I mean, this includes the, the yeah. implicit statement that. That's right. That they are all the same up to some. Yeah, that's right. Um, but yes. Okay. So what's the history here? So this last statement here was proved um, for the case where P is a polytope, and these lifts are polyhedral lifts, and PSD rank is replaced by non-negative rank by Yanakakis in 91. Okay, so we just call these sort of general Yanakakis theorems. So, this, so that was the special case where he said non-negative rank of the slack matrix is the minimum K such that I can write P as the projection of a polyhedron coming from a slice of the non-negative orthand. Okay, so that's that. That's the case Yanakak has proved. And then what we did was to generalize this to the case where P is a arbitrary convex set. Um, so P is that, and we replace the positive these PSD cones with arbitrary cone families. And then instead of no, uh, PSD rank, you have to take these cone ranks. But if you have convex sets, they're not really matrices that you have to take ranks of, but operators that come from these convex sets. But for the most part, we'll just only talk about polytopes. So you can just think about the slack matrices as the only things we will care about. They're, they're never going to be operators. So this PSD rank may not be a finite number in this case for a slack matrix because it can, like, P can be a circle and then the number That's right. Of... That's right. So the, so the non-negative rank of a, a circle is infinite, right? I can never write the circle as the projection of a polyhedron, right? So there are situations when that can happen. And um, yeah. That's true. OK, so this, the, the first statement is sort of a generalization of the second statement. This is in various versions in different papers. The non-negative version is in the thesis of uh, Kostya Pashkovic, the PSD version. It's, it's kind of folklore. Once you see the, the, first, the second statement, the first one is uh, pretty straightforward. OK, so that's sort of the connection between PSD rank and PSD lifts. So if you want to know the size of the smallest PSD lift, you have to know the PSD rank of the slack matrix. That's the message, OK? All right. Now, slack matrices of polytopes are not general. They do have a lot of special structure. They have been characterized, but I don't think we've fully figured out how to use that characterization. Okay? So they, ha they do have a full description by now, uh, but um, that's where we are. OK, so let's d see some examples. So here's the, the elliptope projecting to the square again. So, it, so the polytope is minus 1 to the 1 square. And we, this is the description of the, the, the elliptope projecting. So this is the elliptope. And then we, are, we have to project that down onto the xy coordinates. The slack matrix that we get from the square is this one. There are four vertices, four facets. And then if you calculate the distance of each vertex from each facet, it's either 0 or 1. Right? Either the vertex is on the facet or distance 1 from the facet. So they're filled with zeros and 1s. And the PSD rank of this matrix is 3. Okay? So this tells you that this uh, lift that we constructed here is the minimum possible. You cannot write the square as the projection of a 2 by 2 PSD cone sliced with anything. So 3 is the smallest size of a PSD cone into which you can lift uh, the square. Okay, So that's... Um, the, an example where p equals q. Now let's change it slightly. So now let's make take p and q to be different. So now I'm taking q to be the, the same square. It's minus 1, 1 square. But I'm going to shrink my p with a parameter. So I'm going to take a smaller square inside that the outer square. And this the, the sides of this inner square is controlled by a and b. It's a rectangle. Okay. And now remember what is p so if you calculate slack matrix, you get this big stuff. Okay, so here are the vertices of the inner square, here are the facets of the outer square, and we have to calculate the slack of every vertex and every facet, you get this matrix. Okay? Now, if you want to calculate the PSD rank of this matrix, it's going to depend on A and B. So remember what you have to do is you have to be able to sandwich this projected spectrohedron in the middle, and as long as you can do this for uh, and depending on when you, so you go through your different cones, and at some point you cannot do it with the 
uh, PSD cone of size one, then PSD cone of size two, and so on. So in this example, it'll jump like this. So if PSD rank is one, exactly if A equals B equals zero, that means the inner, pol inner polytope is just a point. And then as you grow your A and B parameters like this, PSD rank will be two if A squared plus B squared is between zero and one, and three otherwise. Okay, so there will be this, um, the, the PSD rank will move as you grow the inner square b because of the sandwiching theorem that we saw. Okay, so that's, that's an example. Okay, so now um, let me say a little bit about what we know about PSD ranks. And we know very little, that's kind of uh, one, we know, uh, sorry, we know very little in some directions. We know quite a bit more in other directions. So let me start with the sort of the lower bound side of the story, which has been of uh, great interest to lots of people, especially in computer science. Um, so on the lower bound side, we don't know much. So the, one of the, the results that came out last year is this result of Breit, Dadush, and Pokuta. They proved that if you take all 0, 1 polytopes in Rn, then not all of them can have small lifts. So small meaning polynomial size lift in N. Okay, so there will exist 0, 1 polytopes in Rn that are forced to have uh, PSD lifts that are exponential in size. Okay, so how does this go? This, this goes by a counting argument. So what, what they do is they say, okay, if I have a PSD factorization, I can always assume there is one where the eigenvalues of the factors are bounded. Okay, so you can renormalize your factorization so that you put this norm bound on the factors. And then you count how many 0, 1 polytopes there are in Rn, and you say, okay, there are too many. So if, if, there, if there are bounds on these factorizations, you can't, there's not enough to cover all of them. So it's a counting argument that's very uh, implicit, and it does not produce a concrete family of 0, 1 polytopes that have this exponential sized PSD rank. Okay? So there's no concrete family known so far. Uh, with large PSD rank, meaning exponential in N, 0, 1. And a, a lot of people are interested in this as the potential candidate that will produce such a thing. Um, so this is isomorphic to the cut polytope. This is the correlation polytope. Uh, it's the convex hull of all rank 1 matrices AA transpose, where A is a 0, 1 vector. Okay? So no, uh, co nothing uh, concrete about PSD lifts, general PSD lifts of this polytope yet. So this is where we are in terms of lower bounds. But on the other hand, we do know PSD rank has to grow. Okay, So we do know uh, some further things. So in the paper we wrote in the beginning, we had a result like this. So if the PSD rank of a polytope of, is k, then p has at most uh, k to the order k square n facets. So you cannot ha keep on piling up facets into your polytope and keep k small. If you grow the facets a lot, but keep the dimension the same uh, of the polytope P, then you're forced to increase the PSD rank. So in particular, even in the plane, if you have n gons and you start increasing the, the n in the n gon, then you have to have the PSD rank growing to infinity. You cannot have it just be bounded. So even in the plane, you can produce examples with PSD rank going to infinity uh, as you grow the number of facets. Are these zero one polytopes? No, these are arbitrary n-gons. Do we know such a statement for zero one polytopes? For zero one polytopes, what we have is basically something like this: that it has there has to be uh, zero one polytopes that need an exponential sized lift. In fact, most of them, I think, have to have an exponential sized lift. So, question. so this is where you use elimination of this. Yeah, I will come to that in a second too. Okay. And another kind of result, these are just sample results that we know is, for instance, if you take the PSD rank of a generic n-gon, so that means an n-gon where the vertices don't satisfy any algebraic relations, then it has to be at least uh, fourth root of n. Okay? There are analogous non-negative rank results to many of these results, which I'm not mentioning at all in this talk. Um, so. If you're like a, a polygon in the in the plane, the actual rank of this is three. Uh, is, three. Yeah. is always three. the. It's the always standard. three. Okay. So this is a nice family where you see ra the gap between rank and PSD rank and go to infinity. Okay. Yeah, it's always three. It's always the. So remember, when you take any matrix and you write the p and the q from it, the the p and the q live in space given by the intermediate dimension, which is the rank of the matrix. 
And um, so if you're, if you're just working with polygons, then the rank of the slack matrix is always three. It's always dimension plus one. Okay, so, um, so that's that. And another thing we don't know is we don't know any family where there is an exponential gap between PSD rank and non-negative rank for polytopes. Okay? So for arbitrary matrices, there were, you can create these exponential gaps. You saw the Euclidean distance matrix that had PSD rank two, non-negative rank log n, right? There are arbitrary gaps. But if you look at slack matrices of polytopes, which are fairly special non-negative matrices, we don't know any family that has a big gap. So in particular, we don't know, for instance, whether PSD lifts are truly more powerful than LP lifts in, 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 this, in this context. Do you have a question? So, so we know a gap which is between n and n to the log n. Yeah, we, we know some gaps like that, but we don't know really big gaps, right? So for things like the stable set polytope of perfect graphs, we know some uh, gap like n versus n to the log n, but we don't really know uh, really big gaps. Okay, n to the log n is an upper bound on the non-negative rank of that slack matrix that's in the Yanakakis paper, and n comes from the Lovas theta construction. We don't, we don't know that bound, I mean, that separation for sure, right? Yeah, we don't know it for sure, but it's... If you do, let's, if you look at max cut, mm -hmm. we know that LPs of size n to the log yes. n yeah. don't give better than half. Right, so approximation so is different. I'm talking about exact lifts. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's still, approximation is a, a gap between PQ for, for the PQ. Oh, yeah. In, so in spirit, yes, it answers this kind of question. But I'm, here I'm asking for exact gaps between, between rank and PSD rank. Okay, now there's another kind of lifts that we can define, which are called equivariant lifts, where we know a lot more. Okay, so these are basically symmetric lifts, symmetric PSD lifts. And these are lifts that, in, in roughly speaking, respect the symmetries of the polytope. So if I have a polytope with a lot of symmetry, I want my lift also to capture the symmetry. So it's sort of very um, roughly speaking, what this is saying is that we want to construct very structured lifts such that if I have a polytope here and it's being projected from here and there's a group acting here that keeps the polytope invariant, then if I take a point and I look at where it came from, so maybe it came from here, here's the point, and I apply the group action here, so I go here, this should be the same thing as finding uh, another group element to act on this, so let's call this phi of g, and then projecting this down here. Okay, So somehow Spinning the element and then, I mean, sorry, spinning upstairs and projecting should be the same as spinning downstairs and then getting the same image from before. So these are equivariant lifts. So all these Lasserre lifts and so on are symmetric. Okay, they're symmetric lifts. And uh, this was also the type of lift that was studied by Yanakakis in his original paper when he showed that the matching polytope does not have a small symmetric lift. And there are these, this, nice, these nice, this nice result that just came out um, very recently that shows that the equivariant PSD rank of polytopes, like the cut polytope, for instance, is very, very big. Okay? So if you want symmetric lifts, then the, you do need exponential size. And this was proved uh, uh, sort of for slightly different definitions of equivariant lifts in these two papers. Okay, so symmetry does impose... Uh, we, we sort of think that symmetry does impose serious restrictions on polytopes like this. We don't know exactly yet, but uh, these are uh, very, very large lifts that you're forced to have if you, if you um, impose symmetry. Um, here's another very nice result that's very recent. So this says that the equivariant PSD rank of the regular n-gon is log n. Okay? So this is, uh, this is very nice. Whereas, on the other hand, the, the non-negative equivariant rank of the regular n-gon can be all the way to n. Okay? So if n is a power of a prime number, then we knew from, a, from the first paper we wrote that this can happen. So in the, in the world Wait, of equivariant in lists... Sorry? Is that in the plane? The n-gon? Yeah, yeah, in the plane. Okay. In the plane, so this is the n. non-negative rank without the equivariant constraint is log n, right? Regular, yeah, okay. is log n. Yeah, so if you have uh, non-negative without symmetry, it's log n. Yep. That's the bental nemirovsky construction. And with this result is saying that if you go to PSD, 
but but require a covariant. Yeah, it, exactly. It doesn't cost you much. You still get log n. The true PSD rank we don't know. We think it's maybe square root log n. We don't know. But this in the so just in the family of n gons, you see that there can be exponential gap between PSD lifts and non-negative lifts if you um, if you look at equivariant lifts. Okay. So for equivariant things, the answer the question I asked before is answered. The elliptope is symmetric, yes. Yeah. Okay, so, um, all right, so let me uh, say a couple more things. I'm almost out of time. So, what do we know about lower bounds in general? So, first thing you can see immediately is that the zero one structure, or the, sorry, the zero pattern of the matrix is not useful to study PSD rank. This has been very useful for non negative rank. But the reason it's not useful for PSD rank is just that we saw that if you take the PSD rank of the Hadamard square, it's bounded above by the rank. So if I take a matrix with a certain zero pattern and I square it, it still has the same zero pattern, but now suddenly its PSD rank is bounded above by the rank of the matrix. Right? So I can never do better than rank. Um, this was uh, further studied by these, the, uh, Troy Lee and Dirk Tice. And then Barbinock has a result that also says that it doesn't help too much to look at how many distinct entries you have in your matrix. So if you have k distinct entries in your matrix, then PSD rank is essentially a polynomial in rank. Okay? So th these, these things have been very useful to study non-negative rank, but they're not very useful to study PSD rank. So that's one message. And in general, we have this sort of lower bounding technique, sort of a meta principle using two results of Jim. And so I will just say that here. And um, maybe we can improve these, this, this program using the methods that Ben mentioned this morning. But here's the program. So if you want to generally look for lower bounds, like this n-gon result that I mentioned at the beginning, then what you can do is you can say, OK, I want to project something, a spectrohedron, down onto a polytope. So let's put a bound on the polynomials that I need to write the spectrohedron. And Jim Ranagar has a nice result that says you don't need polynomials of degree more than k if you have a uh, uh, spectrohedron in the PSD cone of size k. And then uh, what we do is we use his quantify elimination methods to say, OK, if I know the degree of the polynomials up here, by quantify elimination, I know something about the degree of the polynomials down here. In fact, I know them, uh, an upper bound on them. And then we use the fact that, well, if I know the degree of this entire boundary, then every facet, the product of the, the, the number of facets that you see here has to be smaller than the, that degree, and from that we get a bound. The trouble with it is that it's very hard to actually get any kind of control on the constants and so on, so it's, it's not really easy to study the growth of PSD rank with this method, but you will get results like, you know, the n-gon has to grow in PSD rank in the plane. Okay, so um, should I just stop? Actually, I mean, I've been doing this for everybody. So okay. Maybe if you can drop up in three or four minutes. Three or four minutes. Okay. Just I can stop whenever. So. <laughs> okay. So now let me tell you the, some of the positive results we know. Okay. So this is a completely orthogonal direction, which I think is also very interesting. So people have been very much focused on studying, showing you know negative results about PSG rank. PSG rank is very big for you know whatever type of polytope you want to look at. But on the other hand, you can ask, when is this lift really, really good? Where, for which polytopes can we expect the smallest PSD lifts, right? And in this case, we have uh, one um, theorem that comes in the, uh, that's fairly easy to prove, that if you take a polytope, then the PSD rank is actually bounded below by rank. Okay, so as I said before, for general matrices, this is not true. Rank can be above or below the PSD rank. But if you take polytopes and their slack matrices, then the PSD rank can never go below n plus 1, which is the rank of the slack matrix. Okay? So there's a hard lower bound. And then we can ask, when do you get equality? So the best you can do is, if you have an n-dimensional polytope, you can lift it into the PSD cone of size n plus 1. So when can you exactly do that? And you can do that exactly when the square root rank is also n plus 1. Okay, so this is, this is a, a theorem. And of course, to check this is hard, right? Because I need to look over all signings of my square roots and then figure out what's the minimum and argue that that's n plus 1. So we're not claiming anything about the complexity, but this is, this is the structural theorem. 
And it's kind of interesting to see how this works. So in the plane, it's very easy to see that the only PSD minimal polytopes in this sense are triangles and quadrilaterals. In R3, it's a little bit more complicated. So in R3, this is the complete list of polytopes that have PSD rank 4, which is the minimum possible. Dimension plus 1 is the minimum possible. And the first three types, uh, prisms, quadrilateral pyramids, and simplices, they, you don't, there's no restriction. Anything with that combinatorial type is OK. But when you come to octahedra, there is a restriction on how they, ca the, the, they are situated. So the geometry actually plays a role. And we need something called biplane octahedra, which I can tell you later if you like. And another very nice feature about PSD rank is it's invariant under polarity. So unlike Lasser rank and all these other things, which do not tell you anything about the Lasser rank of the polar, the PSD rank is invariant under polarity. So it's very pretty, and you get all the polars will also work. Here's maybe a familiar example. So there is the uh, Lovas theorem from a long time ago that says that the, if you have a perfect graph, then, it's PS, then it's, uh, it has a PSD lift of size n plus 1, which is the Lovas theta body. And in fact, that, that result is much stronger. The, in the, the only graphs for which PSD rank is n plus 1 are the perfect graphs and vice versa. And there is also some new results by Sanyal and Grande on characterizing matroid polytopes of minimal PSD rank. OK, so let me see what's coming. OK, maybe I'll stop after this. <laughs> OK, so one corollary of the study of minimality is this result. So uh, using one of these minimal polytopes, it was possible to show that PSD rank actually depends on the field. OK, so if you look at. PSD rank over the rational numbers, it can be strictly, oh, I got it wrong. It can be strictly bigger than the PSD rank of the real, over the real numbers. And this is uh, something that um, came out of all the discussions we had in our survey. And there's a nice paper by Hamsa, uh, Joao, and Richard. And this question is open for non-negative rank. We do not know if non-negative rank depends on the field. <coughs> so maybe this is a good place to stop. And, uh, <coughs> So it seems like the slickest proofs for a lot of these relatively recent uh, uh, non-negative rank bounds come out of um, reformulating things in terms of information theory and then doing some direct some kinds of arguments. Obviously, when you have a very nicely structured polytope, um, is there uh, the definition is you know pretty different? Is there any hope of doing something similar for getting rank bounds on you know polytopes arising from CS problems? Yeah. So. Yes, everything I didn't speak about, <laughs> including the previous slides. So one of the things is there is a quantum information interpretation of PSD rank. And this has been the um, focus of people like Troy Lee and Ronald DeWolf and all. So they are trying to use information theoretic methods to put lower bounds on PSD rank. But it's not anywhere near well developed as we have for non-negative rank. For non-negative rank, it has been helpful to show um, so results of Ankur and so on. Um, that it can give you lower bounds. But here we don't quite have that machinery yet. And um, maybe I should, I will leave the, so this, this, is, this was my special slide for Ankur, so I want to put it off at the end at least. So complexity issues, if I can take one second, we know very little. So square root rank is NP hard to compute. And this is a very simple example that shows it. So this is a matrix with the identity over here. And these are squares of some numbers. And this has PSD rank n or n plus 1, because this, the identity already has rank n, PSD rank n. So it could either stay at n or go to n plus 1. And it'll have PSD rank n if and only if the partition problem is true, if, if you can partition a1 through a n. So this it reduces to partition. Um, P, PSD rank in general, is it NP hard to compute? We think yes, but we don't know. There's an analogous result by Bavasis. Um, using sandwiching simplices between polytopes and so on. Is there a very simple proof like this of Avasa's result? That would be very nice, if possible. And um, similarly, for f if you fix k and ask, is, is PSD rank at most k? This was shown to be polynomial time doable by Aurora et al. and then improved by Ankur. And this is also not so easy to see for PSD rank because 
in Ankur's result, he very much uses the fact that the algebraic degree of linear programming is one. Right? That, that we know that the optima of linear programs are on vertices. That you can write them down with Kramer's rule. They are given by rational numbers. For PSD, we don't, for SDP, we don't know anything like this. We don't know what, I mean, the algebraic degree can be very, very high, as Ben said in the morning. So we can't immediately translate any of these results, but it could be that um, you have other techniques or other ideas to prove uh, complexity of these ranks. Okay. So rank, positive rank, and square root rank extends immediately to tensors. But it seems that PSD rank doesn't extend to tensors. Is that a flaw? False? In some sense, it's nicer than tensor rank because it's lower semi-continuous, semi -lo uh, lower semi-continuous, and so on. But uh, yeah, and it does share this field dependence issue. But if you're willing to extend <coughs> positive semi-definite matrices to positive semi-definite symmetric tensors, tensors yeah. good. Let's thank Rika.